Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am Timmy Trinkle, also known as Horror Fan for Life. And I have one more movie review for you today. This movie I first watched when I moved back home after my surgery and everything. Uh, this was in 2015, uh, around set, uh, around November of 2015. Uh, this movie is another Brat Pack movie. Um, and it is a coming of age drama or dramedy. It is called St. Elmo's Fire. Now, this was released on June 28th, 1985. And as I said, it's a coming of age dramedy. It has a 6.4 out of 10 on IMDb, a 44% on Rotten Tomatoes, and 84% on Google. It had a $10 million budget and made $37.8 million at the box office. And this was directed and co-written by Joe Schumacher and written by Earl Kerlinger. And it stars Emilio Estevez, Rob Lowe, Andrew McCarthy, Demi Moore, Judd Nelson, Ali Sheedy, Mary Wingham, Annie McDowell, and Jenny Wright. And this movie centers around um, six friends from uh, college uh, who graduated and are moving on with their individual lives. Um, but one thing is always for sure, they always meet up at St. Elmo's Fire Bar and Grill where one of their members, uh, Kirby, he is a law student and waiter there. Uh, Billy, who plays the saxophone, uh, he uh, plays there sometime uh, with the band. He's a reluctant husband and father. And uh, he really doesn't want, he really doesn't know what he wants to do with his life. Uh, he knows he loves the saxophone. Uh, this character is played by Rob Lowe. Uh, Andrew McCarthy plays Kevin. Uh, he is a writer and he is a roommate uh, to Kirby, played by Ian Mealy Last of Us. Demi Moore, she plays Jules. She is a investment banker, and she's the party girl of the group. Uh, Judd Nelson plays Alec. Uh, he is a yuppie and uh, wants to get a career in politics going. Uh, Ali Sheedy is Leslie. She is an architect, and she is reluctant to marry Alec. She just doesn't feel that he wants to make that next step, and she ends up uh, loving um, someone else within their group, um, which we'll get to here in a minute. Uh, Mary Winningham, she plays Wendy. Uh, she is a welfare clerk, and she loves helping others, but she's really rich and doesn't really have to do anything. Andy McDowell, she is Dale. She is an intern at a hospital, and um, Kirby, played by Emilia Estevez, has a huge crush on her, but she's already spoken for. And Jenny Wright plays Felicia. Now, getting back to um, uh, when I was getting ready to talk about um, Leslie, the architect, uh, she really loves uh, Kevin, played by Andrew McCarthy. Uh, they end up hooking up one night, and uh, they're trying to hide it from... Um, from Alec, uh, but he ends up finding out. And so that strains their relationship a little bit. And getting into the second act of this movie, you start to find out uh, what these characters are actually about and what they really want to do with their life. And then the third act comes around. There are some struggles, um, especially with Jules. Um, She's got a few secrets. Um, she is the party girl. She's been doing drugs, but she's been sleeping with her boss to basically keep her job. Well, her boss is pretty much fed up with her and doesn't really, really want to mess with her anymore. And so she ends up getting fired. And uh, she struggles um, uh, with that, with the breakup and losing her job. And then along the way, uh, Kirby, um, 
he really finds out that um, a girl that he has a crush on, she's just not available, uh, but they could be friends, and uh, that this is, that's just going to have to work. Uh, then you have uh, Rob Lowe's character, uh, who loves to play the saxophone. Uh, he tries making a move on Jules, uh, pretty much to the point where you would think he's probably going to try and uh, force sex on her, but she doesn't allow it, and um, and so that strains their relationship too. Uh, there's just a lot of different drama and conflicts within this group because before all this, when they were in college, when they were partying and having great times, they didn't have these worries and everything about being an adult, paying bills, and uh, having to find new jobs and uh, just all the responsibilities that come with being an adult. Uh, and this is what makes this movie great because you care about these characters. You care about what happens to them, uh, especially Jules and um, Jules and Billy are the two that you worry most about in this movie. Uh, eventually, Billy finds his calling and he ends up leaving uh, town and heads to the big city of New York uh, to pursue uh, music. Uh, so he gets on the bus and takes off. Uh, and then, of course, you still have the friends there uh, at St. Elmo's Fire. Uh, still some strains, uh, strain on the relationships, but for the most part, you know, they still care about one another and, and everything. And eventually, um, you have Alec, uh, who forgives and forgets um, about the hookup between uh, Kevin and Leslie. But all, all the better, because they really do care about each other. And you can tell that from the first time they hook up, too. But... Um, yeah, this is just a far different movie than what you got in The Breakfast Club a few months earlier. Because this one came out after The Breakfast Club. And you have um, you have uh, three actors from that movie in this one. And then you got a lot of members of the Brat Pack uh, in this movie as well. Mainly the Brat Pack con consists of uh, Judd Nelson, Molly Ringwald, Emilio Estevez, Anthony Michael Hall, Ali Sheedy, Rob Lowe, Andrew McCarthy, Demi Moore, um, and Mary Winningham are typically your Brat Pack members. Uh, sometimes they mention um, uh, Robert Downey Jr., um, Charlie Sheen, uh, and over the years they've added a few more and more uh, to the Brat Pack. But, the ones I mentioned before are generally the original uh, OGs members of the Rat Pack. But St. Elmo's Fire is a great coming of age movie. You, and even though this is from the perspective of them graduating college and you know moving on to the real world, uh, it's still a great coming of age movie from that perspective because they are older, but they still have to learn uh, what it takes to be an adult and do those things. And that's what makes this movie great. And despite the 44% on Rotten Tomatoes, I really love this movie. And it will forever go down as, as one of my favorite movies. Um, I don't know where I would have placed it on any list, per se, but it definitely is up there. It's, it's a fantastic movie. And... Joel Schumacher um, did a great job with this movie. Um, and one of my favorite Joel Schumacher movies as well. So in the comment section below, if you've seen this movie, let me know what you thought about it in the comment section below. And which movie do you think um, is better between uh, St. Elmo's Fire and The Breakfast Club? I know a majority of are going to say The Breakfast Club, which I will too. Uh, but just give me your thoughts and opinions. Let me know which one you love more, if in fact you've seen both movies. If you've only seen one or the other, then you really can't say anything. But other than that, I thank you guys for watching this movie review. Stay tuned for more mini-movie reviews. 
top tens rankings, TV show reviews, and trailer reviews. Um, I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm getting ready to watch uh, the NFL championship football games here uh, in a few minutes. So enjoy it. If you're out and about today, please be safe. Um, the weather is really sucking right now. Um, and just if you have to get out, by all means, just be safe. If you don't, stay home. It's not worth it. Other than that, I thank you guys for watching. And of course, I want to give St. Elmo's Fire a 10 out of 10. So till next time, check you later.